We've got a sponsor. This video is kindly sponsored by App Bounty. Now, on a basic level, a lot of these sort of apps already exist. You get paid for watching ads when you unlock your phone or do certain other activities, but App Bounty has a better system than most. Essentially, what you do is get paid to download and try out different apps, and the more you play or spend time within those apps, the more you earn. The tie-in here is that you can earn a variety of different gift cards. Now, on this channel, I primarily play on Xbox. There isn't really a meaningful reason behind that, I just sort of do. Never really felt the need to switch to PC. The App Bounty system awards Xbox gift cards, as well as PSN ones and some other stuff too. So I can explore new apps, download, test them, uninstall if I want after like 30 seconds and you still get paid, and all the while it builds up towards a code. There is a special link in the description down below if you want to try it out, and they also have set us up with a code, UEG, to give a sign-up bonus to anyone who uses it. So if you want to check out the app, click the link, it helps out the channel, you also get paid for it, and net some gift cards, mutual win-win. Good deal. Cool. Now on to the actual video. So at various points I've discussed the landscape of casual gaming versus hardcore gaming and admittedly I've been rather abrasive about the subject. The concept I wanted to touch on was the idea that games often now cater to a more casual audience as an attempt to expand on their potential buyer's market, but simultaneously they try to string along the more hardcore demographic that has supported the industry for previous decades. The most important thing to do here is define terms, because in any sort of discussion regarding casual versus hardcore, many parties have different definitions in their head as to what those terms are or mean. Now the definitions I would like to lay out are by no means universal. Many players will still view casual and hardcore to mean entirely different things, but my hope is to lay them out in such a way as to precisely communicate my further points based on a fundamental understanding of what they mean with regards to this video. I've previously defined hardcore with help from the term grinding, and I still sort of stand by that. A lot of people mistakenly interpret the term hardcore to mean plays for large amounts of time, but that is not actually the case. A hardcore player is not something that is built around a time check, because as soon as you assign a time check, you inevitably exclude players from the category that actually can and are considered to be hardcore. If a player logs in for one hour a day or 10 hours a day, it doesn't make a difference because some players accomplish or achieve in one hour what others fail to do in 10. However, it may now seem like I'm trying to define hardcore in terms of skill, which is also not true. You can have an extremely skilled player who accomplishes more and at a much faster rate, and likewise a player that learns very slowly, but both are equally deserving of the classification hardcore. So now we come to grinding. I previously defined hardcore as a willingness to participate in incremental improvement or reward payouts with the desire to elevate or strengthen over time. A lot of confusion arose, however, because one could view that as the stance that if you are not getting tiny payouts and completing the same activity over and over, you are not hardcore, since that is another well-known definition of the term grinding. But the goal here was to propose that the mindset of being open to the idea of trial and error improvement, or the evolution of tactics to overcome obstacles, is one of the true core principles behind the term hardcore. Now for the term casual, because through the lens of the definition I will be using today, a great many players may not feel strongly that they identify with the term hardcore and its definition, but they will likely be fairly averse to the classification of casual. A casual player, for today's purposes, unlike how many describe it, does not mean someone who plays here and there for small periods of time. I'm looking at you, fathers, mothers, students, or those that have a job which takes up the bulk of their time. Just because you don't get a lot of breaks to sit down and play something you enjoy does not mean you are a casual by default. In fact, I would argue that most of those out there that have a relatively small amount of time to play can even be just as hardcore as anyone else because there is a sort of emphasis on maximizing playtime and really getting the most out of the sessions that you do have. And when I say getting the most, I don't just mean in terms of rewards, but also personal enjoyment, finding lots of collectibles, getting tons of achievements, and having those accomplishments hold meaning to you. Additionally, there are those that do not purchase games often or very rarely have the resources to upgrade their hardware. There can sometimes be an impression that if you are not getting most of the new big games that release and grinding them out as soon as they launch, that you are a casual gamer because of that. Wrong again. There are a great number of examples to prove this, but for today I'll focus on Minecraft. Minecraft is sometimes regarded as a casual game. Maybe it's because of graphics, maybe it's because of the format, I don't know really, but a lot of viewers have probably heard the pejorative phrase, go back to Minecraft, or something along those lines, and it gets thrown around quite often, with the undertone being that Minecraft is casual, you are casual, so you should go back to a game better suited for your needs. 
This mindset is way off base. Minecraft is the definition of a world that becomes infinitely more rewarding with the hardcore mindset. There are certain servers in Minecraft that have been running for years and years, and now have cities, castles, and crazy locations, all built through the contributions of hardcore players around the world. Many players simply don't have a hardware setup that can run brand new AAA title games, or perhaps they don't have the resources to purchase new titles all that often, so they stick with what they have, and they get the most out of it. These players may be accused of being casual, but in my eyes, and again for the purposes of this video, they are far from it. The true definition of casual is actually a grave insult, at least to me, in the world of gaming. A casual player is someone who has an unwillingness to improve, learn, or sink in time and effort. With the rise of microtransactions in mainstream gaming, and the already full-blown infestation within mobile gaming, a casual player is able to simply skip everything that they deem to be too time-consuming, too difficult, or too tedious. This is not to say that anyone and everyone who has purchased a microtransaction is somehow a filthy casual or anything like that. In truth, a lot of players end up buying one or two items, boosts or boxes, in various games because of the carefully crafted incentive programs that game developers and publishers employ nowadays. Not only that, but the desire to skip one particular level or segment of a game can be quite powerful, and succumbing to that pressure or desire a few times does not by itself constitute a casual player. But the players that find themselves routinely giving in and paying extra money to skip the the product that they already paid to play, that's where we start to see a problem. A casual player is someone that feels that they should not even have to improve. A true casual player adopts a title with the full and knowing intention to not learn, not improve, and utilize whatever extra modifiers the game offers to skip, defeat, or progress through the game on a whim. Casual players are the type that will play a mobile game that offers, let's say, 10 levels, five of which are unlockable through either grinding or paying, and then pays immediately, unlocks all the levels, plays two of them, gets bored, and puts down the game for good. That's a casual player. Now again, we have a conflict here where players that have a high level of disposable income and use it freely to purchase games and in-game products might assume that I am saying they are by default a casual player. Again, this is not necessarily true. A gamer can purchase many titles and then subsequently a great deal of microtransactions and still not conform to the definition I am laying out because the keystone piece of this concept is that casual players pointedly believe that they should not have to learn or improve, that the game should always be constructed so as to fit their personal attention span and and preference, and as soon as it fails to do so, or deviates in any way, shape, or form, they either purchase something to change it, or abandon the game entirely. A point to make here is that games are entertainment products, and thus should be entertaining, but games are also artwork, and artwork is not bound by the expectation that it please everyone all the time for every reason. Some of the most successful artworks in the world make the viewer uncomfortable. Some of the best stories or books have moments of frustration or anger as the story evolves around you, and likewise, some of the best video games have scenes or threads of their narrative that make you happy, sad, angry, or annoyed. The hardcore player embraces these moments and has a willingness to persevere. The hardcore player understands that they must improve, overcome, adapt, and evolve, while getting the most out of this fictional world that they are in. The casual player views anything and everything they don't understand or enjoy on an immediate surface level to be a nuisance, and because of that shallow mindset, they heavily utilize in-game stores, progression boosts, or abandon a game entirely to find something new. The vast majority of you watching this are, by my definition, hardcore players. The mere fact that you have made it to this point in the video makes that clear, because what benefit has it given thus far? The casual players, self-aware enough and intelligent enough to even know that they are casual players, have likely already felt personally insulted, given a thumbs down, and immediately clicked away. So anyone left, I'm pretty confident saying that even if you play one hour a week, struggle at every game you pick up, switch games frequently, or have played old school RuneScape since the day it released, you are are by my definition hardcore and decidedly not ruining the games industry. Now, to further illustrate this point, let's discuss Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Sekiro is a From Software game, a developer that is notorious for difficult video games that challenge the user and require dedication and willingness to learn. I had some very harsh words regarding this debate during a previously posted video, in which I said articles like this one were a total disgrace because the assertion that the game does not respect its players because it does not have an easy mode. Well, it's a crock of shit. 
Since then, I have formed a more nuanced opinion, but largely speaking, it is still quite similar. On a basic level, there is one meaningful counter-argument to the idea that expecting Sekiro to have easy mode, or settings that drastically lower the difficulty, is anything other than a casual injection of idiocy that would fundamentally damage the game. The counter-argument is that accessibility options would allow for disabled gamers to truly enjoy the product. This is a concept I think that pretty much anyone out there can get fully behind. But the important consideration is what do you add and how do you add it? This article by Steve Spohn does a very good job at laying out the legitimate reasons pertaining to the benefits of accessibility, but it falls flat on its face when he unironically proposes perpetual invincibility as a toggle option, or infinite resurrections, or quite a few additional aggressively casualized solutions that are complete overkill when it comes to solving the actual issue of disabled accessibility. The article overall is well formulated, it outlines that the defense many players use when advocating that the current game formula remain unchanged, where they point to examples of disabled gamers defeating the game in record time, or with relative ease, is like saying, well, Usain Bolt can run a mile in under four minutes, so why can't you? Obviously that doesn't really work. The abilities of an elite few do not accurately display the capabilities of everyone. But even when the argument is well constructed, it still falls apart because the drastic overcompensation proposed would open the door for an influx of truly casual gamers, which would then forever change the formula of From Software Games. Sekiro was published by Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard is notoriously greedy with its predation of the casual market while it cannibalized Call of Duty and other franchises to cater to the audience that asks no questions and simply pays for anything they see. Now, Activision Blizzard does not own From Software. In fact, From Software approached them specifically to publish Sekiro, but almost every single large publisher is well known at this point for one greedy tactic or another. EA is known for Star Wars Battlefront 2, loot boxes, pay to win, Anthem, and FIFA. Activision is known for Call of Duty, insanely lazy microtransactions, bad battle pass offerings, and mass layoffs in the midst of record revenue. Also for screwing with the Destiny franchise before Bungie parted ways with them. Take-Two Interactive is known for preying upon their sports fans, for quotes from the CEO like this one, where he says that they are under-monetizing on a per-user basis, and for fiascos like Red Dead Redemption 2 Online Mode, which is a beta, but not a beta, with ridiculously overpriced gold and nothing to buy, not to mention it was blatantly pay to win until the audience basically lost their shit. I could go on for days. Bethesda is Bethesda. Creation Club, Fallout 76, etc, etc. And to reiterate, for practically every single major publisher, there is a well-known established pattern of greed and predation, specifically catered to the casual audience, because the casual-minded user is a huge section of players. But those players are not what I would consider to be true gamers. If Sekiro were to cave in and alter what is now a long-standing formula to include overkill accessibility options, which as proposed are more akin to god mode than anything else, how long would it be before those options ended up monetized and subsequently incentivized, either by From Software or more likely an overarching publisher or controlling interest that they partnered with? Throttling a game's experience gain or reward systems is not uncommon, so once the inclusion of god mode options has been pioneered and established, it really is only a matter of time before those options start to be dressed up and promoted as paid solutions to a casual problem, and completely diverge from the one good application that they do have of opening up the game to a larger player base of specifically disabled gamers. For those that protest against my pessimism, there was a time when Bethesda tried to sell horse armor, and it was a huge scandal back then. Well, nowadays, that horse armor might even be embraced as a step up over what has become normal. So when I advocate skepticism and concern, it is not hollow or empty. It is based on a proven and long-standing track record of demonstrably negative progression. When it comes to accessibility for difficult games, primarily with the target of opening the door for gamers with disabilities, it needs to take the form of control scheme customization, or alternative combat formats. I mean, someone beat Sekiro on Donkey Kong bongos for fuck's sake, so control scheme customization is certainly possible. Offer tools that preserve the atmosphere of learning, perseverance, and overcoming obstacles, which reward hardcore gamers, but do not open up the game for the invasion of casuals. 
The casual audience seems to care more about socializing than anything else, with a strong emphasis on pick up and play, the idea that every activity should be accessible to anyone at any time, regardless of playtime, skill level, or experience, and it's an idea that has been progressively evolving over time. Since truly casual players, as we established previously with our definition of terms, are unwilling and perhaps unable to improve or evolve, they are perfectly accepting of the paid solutions laid out before them by gaming publishers and sometimes developers. As a result, the profits increase as a larger population of casual gamers takes root, and the inevitable result is that the game they infested winds up losing a large chunk of its appeal for true gamers. Casual gamers are ruining the gaming industry by creating an environment where the most profitable thing to do is destroy the experience of hardcore gamers. The mobile market has eclipsed the combined revenue of both the PC and console gaming platforms because it is rife with truly casual individuals who almost blindly pay without appreciating what gaming really is and can be. I've said before that if you play games on your phone, you're not a gamer, and that isn't quite universally true. If you have the right mindset, you are still a hardcore gamer regardless of platform, especially considering the computing power of modern day phones and their ability to be used as emulators, among other things. There's a bunch of different applications for them. But I would maintain that if you only play games while you're on the toilet or something like that, while forking over a few dollars every time a game presents you with any hint of a challenge, which is sadly a large section of what is now widely regarded as gamers for some reason, then I say again, that is not a gamer. That is, in fact, akin to an invasive species or a plant strain which infiltrates an environment and then proceeds to grow out of control till that environment is ruined for the real inhabitants. The takeaway is that a lot more people consider themselves casual than actually fit the definition of casual, at least in my eyes. The real casual players don't really surf YouTube gaming videos, but they are an increasingly large group within the games that we all know and love, with an increasingly negative effect as a result. We all know some of them, a friend or an acquaintance who just doesn't care about getting better or learning or anything really, who mainly plays to be social but routinely buys into the new and evolving monetization schemes with the intent on remaining competitive but doesn't actually care about being competitive and doesn't even realize that they are perpetuating a downward cycle. The purpose of this video is to get a few players to maybe wake that friend up, say hey, stop doing that shit, you're hurting the game, hell, you're hurting the entire industry by doing it, just play, don't reward bad practices, and endeavor to improve rather than pay money to skip the thing that you paid money for. I don't think I'll ever understand that concept. But that's it, enough for today. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. There are a bunch of different ways to support, like Patreon, channel memberships, merchandise, and also, of course, a link to the App Bounty sponsorship with our code already plugged in for a bonus. But you've already supported the channel plenty just by watching to this point in the video, so no need to overdo the outro here. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.